Hello guys, my name is Manu, head of the React.js department at Creative Team. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the usage of React with Redux. In the first two parts, we are going to create a new application to learn some of the basics of Redux. And in the last two parts, I'm going to showcase you the usage of it with one of the products that I've been working on at Creative Team. This being said, let's begin. I'm going to use Node.js version 10.13.0 LTS and also I'm going to use Create React App version 2.1.1 installed globally. The command for installing it globally is sudo npm install minus g create react app. I'm going to delete it since I've already got the package. So this being said, let's begin with a new app. Create React App React Redux Tutorial. Okay, now let's cd into it and run npm start. And here we have it, the default React app given by Create React app. At the beginning of the tutorial, I did not say what we were going to build since I actually needed this started template. We are going to use Redux to make the React logo start and stop spinning. Let's close the server and write npm install minus save React Redux Redux. What Redux does, in a very general sentence, is that it creates a global state for the whole app that can be accessed by any of our components. It is a state management library. You only have one state for your whole app and you do not have states for each component. React Redux is used so we can access Redux data and modify it by sending actions to Redux. Actually, not really Redux, it's a store, but we'll get there in a moment. The official docs state, React Redux lets your React components read the data from a Redux store and dispatch actions to the store to update data. So when working with Redux, we will need three main things. Actions, reducers, and store. The actions are objects that should have two properties. One describing the type of the action and one describing what should be changed in the app state. The reducers are functions that implement the behavior of the actions. They actually change the state of the app based on the action description and the state change description. The store brings the actions and reducers together, holding and changing the state for the whole app and there is only one store. If you still do not understand yet everything, just hang in there, you'll get the point in a bit. So let's go ahead and create the actions. MKD src actions touch src actions start action.js touch src actions stop action.js As I've told you, we are going to start and stop the logo from spinning, that's why we've created two actions, one start action and one stop action. Now let's edit the start action JS as follows. Export const start action equal type rotate payload true. So we are going to say to our reducer that the type of the action is about the rotation, rotate of the React logo. And the state for the rotate of the React logo should be changed to true. We want the logo to start rotating. For the stop action, we are going to say export const stop action equal type rotate payload false. Once again, we are going to say to our reducer that the type of the action is about the rotation of the React logo and the state for the rotate should be changed to false. We want the logo to stop rotating. Now we need to create the reducer. So mkdir src reducers touch src reducers rotate reducer.js and the code for it export default state action switch action type case rotate return rotating action.payload default return state so the reducer will receive both of our actions which both are of type rotate and they both change the same state in the app, which is state rotating. Based on the payload of these actions, state rotating will change into true or false. I've added a default case which will keep the state unaltered 
if the action type is not rotate. The default value is there in case we create an action and we forget to add a case for that action. This way we do not delete the whole app state, we simply do nothing and keep what we had. The last thing that we need to do is to create our store for the whole app. Since there is only one store with one state for the whole app, we are not going to create a new folder for the store. So this being said, we are going to run this command, touch src store.js. Let's go ahead and add the following code inside it. Import create store from Redux, import rotate reducer from reducers rotate reducer. Function configure store of state equal rotating true return create store of rotate reducer and state. Export default configure store. So we create a function named configure store in which we send a default state and we create our store using the created reducer and the default state. I'm not sure if you've seen my imports, they use absolute paths, so you might have some errors due to this. The fix for this is to add a .env file inside it, specifying the notepad for our app. So we write echo notepad equal dot slash src into .env. And here we have it. Now that we have set up our store, our actions and our reducer, we need to add a new class inside the src app.css file. This class will pause the rotating animation of the logo. The new class is going to be app logo paused animation play state paused. We now need to modify our src app.js file so that it listens to our store state. And when clicking on the logo, it calls one of the start or stop actions. First things first, we need to connect our component to our Redux store. So we import connect from React Redux. To change the Redux store state, we'll need the actions that we've already done. So let's import them as well. Import start action from actions start action and stop action from stop action. Now we need to retrieve the state from our store and we want to say that start and stop actions will be used for changing the state. For this, we are going to use the connect function which accepts two parameters. Map state to props, this is used to retrieve the store state and map dispatch to props, this is used to retrieve the actions and dispatch them to the store. So let's write them as follows. Const map state to props equal an arrow function with a state parameter and returns an object of that state. And const map dispatch to props an arrow function with a parameter of dispatch which returns two objects. First one is start action and this will determine the dispatch or the call to the reducer of the start action done by us. And the other one will be stop action dispatch stop action. And now we need to export our app with the connect function and these two objects. So we write connect of app with map state to props and map dispatch to props as parameters. Let's go ahead and add the new class inside the image tag through the rotate object of the app state as follows. We say app logo plus this props rotate question mark empty string colon space app logo post. So we've used the conditional operator to add a new class. And now we need to add the onClick prop. So once again, this props rotating question mark, this props stop action colon, this props start action. So if the state of the rotate is set to true, we want to call the stop action, else we want to call the start action. Now inside the index.js, we need to call our store so it can be global to all of the components that are going to be called in our whole app. For this, we'll need to import the provider component from React Redux and also our configure store from our store. Now we need to add inside the React Doom render the provider with the store created by us as follows. Provider store equal configure store and now we close the provider. We've encapsulated the app inside the provider so our whole app will be able to access our store and get data from it. Let's go ahead and run again npm start. As we can see, 
Now we can stop and start the logo from spinning. See you on the next part.